Good afternoon and welcome to Mallow for the Dr. Harty Cup final. Third time lucky we hope today after Storm Dennis and Storm George did their worst in recent weeks. It's it's, it's Jorge. Jorge. <laughs> Anthony Daly, linguist and uh, former <laughs> Clare and Flannan's hurler alongside me here this afternoon. Uh, Delo, as I said, third time of asking here this afternoon. The pitch looking in remarkable condition and indeed the conditions in general looking excellent. Yeah, well, I'm in fairness to, to Mello G and you know, the way they've turned out the pitch. I know there was a couple of ladies football games played here during the week and even you know the surface looks good from here. We've had a lot of rain though, you know, you can expect it'll be difficult to see the ball hopping, but from watching the teams in the warm-up, reasonable conditions, um, wind kind of blown away from the town end if you like here, uh, so that might be a factor, but nothing like what it was going to be two weeks ago, oh, and obviously yesterday you could not have played a game either, so the right decision, I know it does put a bit of pressure on the overall all Ireland Colleges competition uh, with fixtures and with lads doing exams uh, all along, but look, we're looking forward to a great hour's entertainment here, and uh, Hopefully, the two teams capable of serving up a cracker. Uh, CBC appearing in the second final, back-to-back finals, and Flannans not in a final since 2007 and not champion since 2005, which is a famine from a Flannans point of view. You know, we don't often get to say that about clear teams of any sort, but certainly with St. Flannans, 21 titles. Obviously, there'd have been an awful lot of, of those teams. I think bar one that would have been uh, with outside lads between borders. You know, Tip, Limerick, Galway, Kerry lads even... Uh, uh, but this all all clear team really you know a great achievement to be here and, and uh, it will be a great achievement for them to go all the way obviously the CBC boys thinking the very same thing with a, a massive rugby tradition in that school and you know new ground for them over the last few years and really doing well at it OK just mentioned there uh, Anthony talking about uh, a great hours hurling ahead of us we could actually have a bit more than that I was talking to the Munster Council officials earlier result will have to be on the day and if it requires penalties it requires penalties because the two teams will be out within the next week in the All-Ireland quarterfinals of the Croke Cup competition. We're going to take a look at the teams now we're going to bring up the uh, CBC team uh, up onto our screen now. Just uh, one change on that team. Dennis McSweeney from Blarney coming in for Owen O'Leary of uh, Glen Rovers. It's a, a nice uh, selection headache to have. Uh, Cork Minor coming in. Yeah. Uh, Dennis, who was out with a broken finger, missed the uh, semi-final win over Middleton, but will be starting at wing forward. Yeah, and I suppose, look, uh, Colum, in that respect, I suppose the extra couple of weeks was no harm for CBC because Dennis being a Cork Minor, a vital member of the team, I suppose, so for them it's a, it's a, it's a no-brainer now he's 100% fit. Um, you know, four survivors from last year's final, which isn't a huge carry over but that that will happen you know, especially when the competition has gone to under 19 now it was basically back in my day straight under 18 you know so minors were minors and now it's different with minor being under 17 as well you could you could be a county minor at under 17 but you you could also be marking a, a county minor of two years ago you know which is the case in, in lots of ways but look obviously Carrock Daly you know Gerard Mulcahy nephew of the great Tomas uh, Niall Hartnett from Douglas and, and Jack Callan won eight in the semi final. They're the four f- survivors from last year. They'll be looking to those guys to lead the way. You know, solid, solid, even team is what I believe. I haven't seen them live yet. Uh, very impressive against Middleton from anyone I was talking to, especially Mark Landers at the game w- was able to give me a good account of it. And uh, so they'll be, they'll be hoping, you know, when you're in the final last year and you u- lose it narrowly, you'll be hoping to go one better the following year. And obviously, huge work done by Tony Wall and, he, and his backroom staff down there. And um, they're getting the returns. Cahillan, the star man, as we mentioned in the uh, semi-final scoring, 1-8 against uh, Middleton, including that uh, wonder goal in the last uh, couple of minutes that turned the game. I- is it concerning that there's huge uh, pressure uh, being placed on young shoulders? Ah, sure it is, but I mean, no more than, like, tis for door for door since I played in one of these... Uh, <laughs> Well, I never felt as much pressure in my life. Uh, Crow Park All Ireland Day was it was a, a, an easy day compared to the Hearty Cup final with all your peers in school and you know you, you just had a massive following and I I think even there might be a delay to the throw in here. Is there just uh, just been told yeah a ten minute delay? I'll tell I presume you. it's on, on the basis yeah, of the is, traffic. Yeah, but that's a, this is a national league Sunday as well, you know, and and huge, you know, huge around the country make or break national league games. But obviously the Hearty Cup savage prestige of its own and. Um, 
that's 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 adding to a little bit of pressure with the lads and so sure, what have they gone through over the last two weeks as well with when will it be on it's on fixed for the Saturday another storm and you know so it is a big day and it is a big day for Jack Callan but look at the pedigree is very good there uh, yes indeed he'll, he'll get plenty good advice from home for sure and again having played in an All-Ireland minor football final winning that dramatic yeah. All-Ireland yeah. minor football final last year as well um, we're going to pull up the uh, St. Flannan's team onto our screens now uh, no changes on uh, a couple of clear castle lads inside yeah. there Dalo to keep uh, an added bit of an interest for you yeah it's great we didn't, uh, we didn't have six guys on a panel since, since the clear team in the 90s I don't think you know uh, it's great to have the, the three lads I suppose backbone and the thing from goalie full back and centre back now whether they're playing those positions is another day's work be a lot of talk that Jarla Collins would be the main man marker listed at midfield number nine that he would go back and, and man mark uh, Jack Cahillan so and that would free up Dara Healy who probably be a more natural um, maybe wing back midfielder that re- would release him out and then obviously Keane Galvin is maybe their main man at centre back and yeah just you know all the talk with CBC is Jack Cahillan Keane Galvin though is, yeah. the, is the quarterback of this operation yeah he's a great lad like you know plays at centre back likes to sit in the pocket also likes to come forward Cullum you know and, and uh get up there and, and get a few scores in every game against Templemore the long range freeze weren't going so good for him early in the game and it looked like it might be costly but down the stretch he nailed a couple of massive ones and that's the one thing with Keane there, there's massive character in him you know but that, look at they have a few great players around obviously Dear McCall has been the main man up front you know won't play the traditional edge of the square 14 role will come to centre forward with Killian O'Connor probably going to midfield to cover for for Jarla Collins and Colm Cassidy going to the wing and they play two inside in uh, Peter Power definitely the man that's left inside uh, young player but very skillful uh, and Conor Hagerty I suppose is the other real talking guy midfield but he gets licence to come forward has ferocious pace and ferocious skill and has come up with big scores in the quarterfinal and semi-final for them this led at uh, wing back uh, Tony Butler from St. Joseph's Tour of Airfield a lot of talk in advance of the game about the challenge he was facing because an extremely talented rugby player as well yeah superb come, come from a great rugby background as well the Butlers uh, his father Kenneth would be a great rugby man but also you know that I would have gone to school with his, his uncle Tony namesake and very talented at every sport they've played really all of them but Tony this Tony has gone down kind of the route of the rugby if you like in terms of um uh, developmental squads with Munster and that kind of thing and he has really you know gone into a fair size of a man now from when I saw him in an under 16 county final between Dora Bearfield and Clarecastle a couple of years ago he was a, a will of the wisp kind of midfielder but now he's a real strong powerful typical of, of the modern kind of rugby guy so don't know the future probably is a rugby route for Tony but definitely for today it's about winning the hearty cup for this lad Right, teams are gone in off the uh, field due to uh, the delay uh, 10 minute uh, hold up here I'm presuming it's because of the uh, big crowds coming into the uh, facility here in Mallow just to mention though very quickly one impact of the change of time on this not so much felt on the starting teams but on the sidelines yeah obviously <laughs> yeah that's 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 really relevant if this played yesterday we would definitely have three uh, well, with two All Stars for sure in Tony Kelly and Jamie Harnady and Jack Brown for me should have been an All Star possibly last 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 year the year before uh, superb for Clare but they were, yeah interesting uh, on the opposite side to where the mentors would be where Brendan Bugler would be I suppose and and his backroom staff on the opposite side Dune Water and Hurleys you'd have Jack Brown and Tony Kelly which is a fair uh, sideline but obviously Jamie Harnady is central to everything with with CBC and would be coach to the team so unfortunately for them that's a huge loss because he's up in Galway obviously trying to um, secure two massive league points for Cork to stay in the hunt for, for the National Hurling League so he just can't be here obviously Davey has given Brendan Bugler the day off uh, probably a bit confident of taking Carlo at home so he can do without Brendan for the day because uh, Brendan will be with, the, with these guys since their first years in Flans and uh, I, I think he'd be like an extra man missing for them if he wasn't here so he's here and, and uh, but yeah it's guess it's a guess uh, you know, even today, if Lennon's played uh, Tulla in the quarterfinal just to see the sidelines that day, turns Fahey, who I would have hurled it myself with Clare in my latter years of Clare, turns it have been coming onto the scene. And, and uh, Aidan Hart was the coach for Tulla <laughs> uh, Community School on the day. And uh, this guess the, the level of uh, quality on the sidelines is incredible these days. 
OK, I see uh, referee John O'Halloran is uh, out undertaking his uh, warm-up. Uh, his uh, mentors are alongside him. And just interesting as he's running across the field, there's no bit of a splash or anything like that. Pitch looks to be in top Yeah, position. there's no surface water at all that we can see. A little bit around the 45s. And they have a little bit of Astro uh, column up on the, you know, the scoreboard end on the, on the, the 14 and at 21 as well you know and on the goal mouth as well so that's just an interesting thing that you might get it the odd uh, ferocious hop up in that john, john you know john holland i think made a very sensible call the last day he was here we met him down the tunnel about 11 o'clock he said look at i just have to walk it and things like that and look at the wind was everywhere uh, two weeks ago and he just you knew by his demeanor he wasn't going to risk you know the, the health and, and 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 welfare of these young great young players we have here the future of our game and, and a good call by him and I wish him the best of luck there's been too much talk about refereeing over the last few weeks I hope John has a great game today no doubt he has I saw him I think he did the quarter final uh, the fans were involved in Tulla and he made a great job of it in, in fairness in Ennis that day and that was a pressure game with two clear schools huge crowd big rivalry and uh, he made a great job of it there very very balanced and very measured in his approach Just in relation Anthony to, to that point refereeing the National League have you ever seen it under the spotlight as much? I like the, the argument I would make, is it a case that refereeing and playing is as it is, but the fact nowadays we've got so many different camera angles, we've got so much analysis, a small incident that would have been missed in the blink of an eye five years ago oh, yeah. is now in ultra HD television and reviewed from four or five different positions. A hundred percent look at it, and look at there is like by the time Look, Colm, I go back to last year's All-Ireland semi-final, you know, and I, I was on the Sunday game, I think the nighttime show, so we were under a bit of pressure to get out of Crow Park and get back to studios and that. And by the time we were leaving, they had picked up on the little touch from the sideline ball from Dara Donovan off Killian Buckley's hurry. So, I mean, it's very hard on the naked eye at the time. We all accept that. I think it's just the overall sentiment about letting our game flow that little bit, you know, if it's a blatant flee, free and it's stopping the play, but if a fella is, is maybe fouled and he can still win the ball and come away with the ball and set up his own team and plays to continue, I think that's what we want to see. And I've no doubt, you know, the two referees under the spotlight last week, Johnny Murphy and Sean Clear, that they would want it refereed. Sean Clear is a referee in Kilkenny. We, we all know how famous the Kilkenny training matches are meant <laughs> to be. You know, and you probably won't get away with refereeing the Kilkenny Club Championship and go on to be a, a top panel referee in Kilkenny unless you, you referee in that kind of spirit and from what I've known of Johnny Murphy back from my involvement with Limerick under it Johnny would want the game to flow he was he was a good hardy footballer in his day and earlier a club level county footballer obviously and you know, so look we're wondering what scrutiny these lads are being put under so hopefully you know that that as I said the championship has never seen me refereed like that though Cullen but there's a bit of an old thing for this every year of we're clamping down on the hand pass this year and we're clamping down on steps and and it, is, and it is during the league because these referees are yeah. trying to make the championship panel and they are ticking the boxes and that they're told to I tick. know, and then, but we, then they're scrutinised by fellas like myself uh, and, and, and fellas writing articles and, and all social media. No, sure, everyone can have their say. And it's hard on them then because they get probably maybe maybe they're dropped a little bit in some ways and dropped back in the pecking order. And uh, so it's, it's, that's the chicken and egg thing like do you let these guys ref it as they see it or do you put a whole pile of constrictions on them early in the year that you wouldn't put on them if they were doing a, a July quarter final and then you wind up with the scenario where these guys don't make the progress they should make and they are good referees in general so it's, it's, it's chicken and egg for me and it's, it's wrong and it should be let, let flow and, and, and get, we have a great product at the moment Colin. we never had it as good people are voting with their fees the viewership figures for, for hurling games are never as high. Why are we trying to change it and tamper with it? And maybe there is a little bit of cynicism has crept in as regards a fella. And maybe we can do something but, but with was that. But was it not always there, though, Dela? I think it was always there, Colm, in fairness. No, look, I wouldn't say. I'd say it's more prominent now, in fairness, that def this defend the D and don't let them in for a goal because there'll be such a big score. But, ah, look, could, could we twink, you know, t tinker with it a small bit? about a fella being on a certain amount of fouls or mm. something like but I don't think a black card was called for a lot of talk about giving the penalty if it is inside maybe I would have suggested myself maybe a two point free might have been something we'd look at maybe let the guy who's fouled take that free to add a bit of mm. intrigue to that and up everybody's skills levels and as regards being able to take frees and that kind of thing but uh, there isn't a massive amount wrong 
But back back when you were playing, Anthony, was there ever a situation where you had to to pull a man down? Uh, definitely. I mean, I, I, like, look, I probably got grief way back in 1997. DJ Carey got the run on me, and fellas would have said I, I couldn't catch him in an Ireland semi final. But I kind of half stayed with him, and I thought I was going to get the hooky money. He was that skillful. And Brian Lohan came out from full back and definitely could have taken him down. Um, we trusted one of us might hook, one of us might block, or Davy might save it. But typical DJ, it was one of the greatest goals. You know, there was no backswing, and he still buried it in the top corner of the net. Could we have taken him down and three of us in the goal for the penalty? And, and fancy our chances because we saved one from him earlier in the game. Uh, you know, like maybe it wasn't as as prominent then, you know, but yeah, definitely now with a lot of teams playing a man back and systems where there's midfielders dropping deep. Not every team is playing a sweeper, obviously. Wexford blatantly play Kevin Nolan back now at the mm. moment, but he also gets forward. Uh, but a lot of teams are playing very deep wing forwards now and midfielders dropping deep. So there is that tendency, don't concede the goal uh, because it's seen as a big score. Yeah. And Kilkenny, of course, when they were going so well were the masters are getting those goals, getting them early. So teams start to maybe trying to get wise to that. What about the suggestion floating around of a two two men operation, two referees, half each? I don't think, you know, I thought TJ on the podcast was superb last Monday morning, and as, as was Mark, it was one of our better podcasts, and that, you know, it was, it was a topical sort of a weekend, and it was easy to get, we could have stayed talking for two hours nearly. But TJ's point that we have two qualified referees as linesmen, and they're not involved enough, you know. I think that, yeah, the statistic, the amount of balls that go out for sidelines in matches now is, is, is it something like less than 10 balls? Oh, or? sure, look, there's no advantage. I'd be trying to coach uh, our, our underage team there now with Castle involved on 21s and saying, Les, there's no real advantage in tipping the ball out over the sideline and getting a round of applause, you know, force him wide, mm. let him carry it over the sideline. So these are qualified, top-class guys, and you'll be on the sideline there with an inter-county team that say, I can call it, that say to you straight away, you know, so... Like, why can't they call it? If they see something happening, trying to watch the, the football game last night even, like, it was very hard for the referee to referee that game in Tyrone last night, get away from tunnel incidents and stuff like that, because, you know, conditions are so bad, and, oh, look at it, we have two guys there, they should be in the field more often for me, uh, and, and call those situations. If they see something, contact the referee and call it. No, I'm still not in favour of stopping up everything all day long. Let it, let it be done with a bit of common sense, a bit of goodwill, a bit of wanting the game to flow and, and, and hurling at its best for us and we'd be all delighted with that I think OK but again do you think it's all feeding into the thing that there's more analysis now that analysis that in terms it leads to more pressure on the referees etc it's, it's, it's as you said the chicken and egg yeah I, I do think there is an element to that I also think there's an element of if something is brought in in football why isn't it being brought in in hurling as well no, we're to uh, Mallow and uh, the rain starting to spill down a bit as well too here in the uh, Cork venue as we said the pitch is in uh, fantastic c condition I'm going to very quickly run through the teams for you we'll start with uh, CBC Owen O'Neill of Blarney is in goals it's uh, Gavin Reddy of Middleton Shane Kingston of Ballinora and Owen Downey of Glen Rovers the full back line Pierce Cummins of St Coleman's is wearing number five Carrock Daly of Lismore in Watford is at centre back and Garod Mulcahy Glen Rovers nephew of Tomas is at uh, the left wing back position James Dwyer of Ballancolic and Owen Kidney of Cove at midfield and the half forward line is Owen Kirby of Blarney Niall Hartnett of Douglas and Dennis McSweeney of Blarney in for Owen O'Leary of Glen Rovers the uh, full forward line then the uh, vice captain Robbie Cotter who's uh, vice captain alongside uh, Niall Hartnett Jack Callan of St Finbars is at full forward and Dara Burke of Douglas will be wearing number 15 we'll take a look now at the uh, St Flannan's team in goals it's Keen Brodrick of uh, Clare Castle one of a host of uh, Clare Castle men that uh, Dela will be cheering on this afternoon a full back line Niall Walsh of the Banner Dara Healy of Clare Castle is at full back and Matthew Reedy of Ballier wearing number 4 a half back line wearing number five is Tony Butler, St. Joseph's Dura Bearfield. Keen Galvin of Clare Castle is the joint captain, will be centre back, and Stephen Casey of Ballier is in the left wing back position. Midfield then, Connor Hagerty, joint captain with Keen of uh, Ina Kilnamona, and alongside him is Aero Oaks, Jarlett Collins, who will be wearing number nine. Onto the half forward line now, it's uh, Ashley Brown of Rouen and uh, he will be wearing number 10. Colm Casty, Clooney Quinn is at uh, centre forward and Killian O'Connor of Corrafin is wearing number 12. Peter Power of Newmarket on Fergus is in the right corner forward position 
Dermot Cahill, who scored that uh, wonder goal against Tulla in Cusick Park in their uh, quarter final, is at uh, full forward. And that leaves uh, the man wearing number 15 in the corner forward position is Oshin O'Donnell from uh, Crushin. Brendan Bugler of uh, Whitegate uh, and of Clare and Wexford fame is uh, the manager and his backroom team, including Mike Kelly, Kevin O'Grady, Shane McCarthy, Peter Casey, and as Dale pointed out a little earlier, James O'Connor drafted in uh, <laughs> for the <laughs> afternoon. He's uh, normally in charge of crowd control. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> and uh, the management team for uh, CBC, Tony Wall, uh, Treylock Martin, Darrow Callahan and uh, Ken O'Halloran I think is in there as well Seamus Harnady though of uh, St. Ita's not here this afternoon because uh, he's got a more pressing engagement up in uh, Salt Hill in Pier Stadium where Galway are hosting Cork in the Allianz National Hurling League so the uh, teams completing their uh, half lap of the field they'll be falling into a formation now and uh, we'll be preparing then for the uh, National Anthem and as uh, Dale pointed out uh, a little earlier this afternoon, it's uh, St. Flannans who are chasing their 22nd Hearty Cup title. And for CBC, contested their first final last year and still waiting for that first title. Yeah, All I think set. significant no. column as well that Flann Flannans won the toss and elected to play into the wind. So we interested to see what way that pans we out. We stand for our on the vein. I think you're picking up by the noise there, the attendance that's here in Mallow this afternoon. Our match coverage this afternoon being brought to you courtesy of the Munster Council being live streamed on the Irish Examiner's Facebook page and on uh, Examiner Sport. If you are watching around the world, please do get in touch and uh, leave us a comment, a message. We're going to try and get to as many as possible in the course of the afternoon. And we're looking forward to... Uh, an enthralling afternoon of uh, top-class hurling here in Mallow between these uh, two sides. Uh, one, the uh, Aristocrats, chasing a 22nd title in the competition, and the other contesting their uh, only their second final at the, this grade. A few positional uh, switches already in play. I uh, can see that uh, Stephen Casey of uh, Flannins is... Uh, in position there for the uh, throw in and we're off and underway in this the uh, 2020 delayed Dr. Harty Cup final between CBC of Cork and St. Flannans of Ennis and it's uh, Dear McCall that's uh, taking the blow there to the chest and a, a free end being awarded Cahill as uh, Dela pointed out isn't your traditional edge of the square uh, full forward out around midfield for that one and it, uh, it's going to give uh, an opportunity to uh, Keen Galvin for the uh, opening free of the afternoon and this is going to test fair, fair tester a fair tester into uh, quite a strong wind here this afternoon off so very uh, smartly ops to uh, go uh, short in that occasion into his corner forward Oshin O'Donnell Oshin holding it up and finding a man outside him that man is Connor Hagerty and Hagerty's shot oh off the post and uh, gratefully received by the goalkeeper Owen O'Neill and uh, that'll just give you an indication of the strength of the wind that's uh, there already Dalo yeah, great, great, great move by Flannans. Qu quick thinking by Keen Galvin to, to Oshin O'Donnell, who popped outside uh, to Conor Hegarty. The wind held it up, but maybe that's a little flaw in the Flannan system. And there's nobody there when that ball came off the post. You know, Peter Power is isolated in there. It works. Fair enough, they can keep it tight. They should score from distance in the second half, but that was possibly a goal opportunity with the distance it came off the post, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, interestingly, Jarla Collins gone straight back to pick up Cahillan, so that was one we predicted. That was the one you uh, predicted, all right. It's uh, 
Uh, Flannan's uh, desperately trying to furrow a way through in these uh, opening exchanges. Uh, CBC haven't managed to get the ball outside their uh, half just yet. Jack Callan is the man, though, that's going to try and make something happen and using the wind to his advantage there, getting it uh, right down into the uh, far end of the field. And here comes uh, CBC with their uh, corner forward there. Dara Burke opts to go right across, and that one is uh, finished in the end. Looked to be the other corner forward, Robbie Cotter, that uh, eventually popped it over. It was Cotter from uh, Blackrock, vice captain of the side. And uh, obviously, route one is going to be the uh, route of option for the team that has the win. Yes, Callan very deep and bringing Dara Collins out to field. Dara Healy was out in front but left it behind him, and the two corner forwards combined. And a lovely finish by Cotter. Okay, it's uh, one point the opening score of the game uh, to uh, Robbie Cotter. Bit of traffic here in front of us, a man keeping the ball in play there is the substitute, uh, Dennis McSweeney. Great call and uh, touched out in the end by uh, centre forward uh, Niall Harknett, and that's going to be a line ball in front of us to uh, St. Fannins. Yeah, Cullum, and already the indications that John Holland is going to let it go, you know what I mean? That was a kind of a maybe a call for a free from the Flannins bench there, but he said play on, get on with it. And no, that's if we're in for that sort of thing once it's nothing wild or anything like that I think we're in for a great hours entertainment yes, two and a half minutes uh, elapsed here CBC leading by that one point to no score nice uh, sideline effort there from Galvin trying to find a man down there eventually that's uh, picking it up is the uh, full forward Cahill Ops to go short as far as Ashley Brown back to Cahill Nice interplay with him and uh, into centre forward Cassidy, who in turn knocks it out to uh, Killian O'Connor. Pushed to the ground, the chop, and it's going to be a, a free in right bang on the uh, 45 yard line. And uh, Keen Galvin going to make the, the trek up for this one. Yeah, and uh, should be within his range, even though with this wind, you're not sure. But great work um, by Dear McCahill there and Oshin O'Donnell and Ashley Rohan combining. And you know, uh, Dermot, although from Corrafin, Ashley from Ryan, but they had played together, amalgamated to, amalgamated to win the minor A championship yeah. last year. And, you know, two very good forwards, especially Oshin Cahill. I think uh, Gavin Reddy is from Middleton being given the job to track Cahill everywhere he goes. Was so. that just down to fewer numbers that they amalgamated, Delo? Yeah, I suppose that's a reality for an awful lot of clubs at this stage. You know, um, you see Keane popping over that one. He'd be glad of that one there. A nice one to start, you know, central and good up around the 45. But yeah, that's a lot of the case. You know, clubs just, they'd be competing maybe at C level or B level on their own. So to go up A amalgamated is good for the lads, exposes them. And they were a, they were a superb minor team last year. Okay, Owen O'Neill uh, from Blarney, big powerful puck out for him under uh, 16 star. But uh, finds uh, only uh, Conor Hagerty who's uh, sitting back in the pocket out as far as uh, Keane Galvin. This man is uh, some talent already as we're seeing on that occasion though the uh, delivery not what he would have uh, expected and it's cut out and it's uh, Dennis McSweeney uh, walking it back to his corner bank Gavin Reddy. Uh, Reddy's uh, delivery though uh, going past Owen Kidney and it's uh, taken up by uh, Tony Butler out to uh, Oshin O'Donnell. Donald brought to ground though. Bit of slip sliding, all right, going on. Uh, but, uh, McSweeney back on the ball again. Uh, he's uh, had a number of touches in the opening few minutes. Flannan's kind of trying to crowd out the area as much as they can. And it's uh, Butler now who's uh, launching it down in towards his uh, wing forward position. And that's uh, Killian O'Connor. Trying to squirrel it out here, and it's uh, taken out on the uh, left hand side. Shot gets away, and that one that's a fine score in the end by uh, Peter Power from uh, Newmarket and Fergus. Looked like the, the breeze had held the ball up there for a second. It did, it did, but a good, good strike, very good striker, Peter Power, very skillful player. Great ball by Tony Butler. There was nobody really inside, and, and, and Power had a few around him, so he went cross field where Killian O'Connor was forced onto the ball, won a real dirty ball, and popped it off to Power. Great score into the win for Flannans. Hartnett uh, getting a touch on the ball. Did he knock it out over the sideline? Looked like he did, and it's going to be a sideline there to uh, St. Fannins on the far side. And that's a very short stroll there for uh, Keen Galvin. But uh, you can see already that uh, Owen O'Neill's main target is uh, Niall Hartnett. He's a giant of a man from uh, Douglas. Uh, Massive man. But interesting that they're, they're leaving uh, Conor Hagerty back in the pocket today, Flannins, and letting Galvin be more expensive and go up the field more. So... That's, that's a change from what's been played all year, maybe just to throw off the CBC boys for a while even. Okay, well, uh, the, the plan has, uh, or the sideline has come to, uh, to naught as the ball ends out, uh, back out over the sideline about uh, 25 yards uh, down and it's uh, Gerard Mulcahy that will be tasked. The uh, smoke bombs 
which are part and parcel of uh, CBC games, whether it's uh, Senior Cup Rugby or Junior Cup Rugby or Harty Cup, uh, already going off here in the distance. You'll see the smoke in a minute as uh, Niall Hartnett gets his shot off as he kind of half stumbles off the uh, post. Second time we've seen uh, the post uh, coming in this uh, afternoon. It's uh, the point score from earlier. Robbie Cotter, nice little jink by him. Looked like he fouled the ball. Referee waving play on. Effort from Pierce Cummins, though, from distance. Been held up by the wind. It's got a trickle. Oh, it looked for a second like it was going right across the line. But uh, in the end, referee deemed that the uh, player encroaching was uh, the corner forward, Robbie Cotter, and I think uh, Jack Cahalan. And I think uh, a free out being uh, awarded. But uh, look for one second there to be uh, dropping right across the line there for, for Flannans. Yeah, dangerous ball for Keane Broderick in the goal. I think I think the decision being by John Holland that it was a square ball, basically. Columbia was in there too soon. But danger and, and the second ball off the post we've seen the game so far. Certainly that, that CBC inside line looked really threatening. Both corners look threatening. And certainly Callan is threatening full. Uh, again, the uh, ball... Missing uh, Niall Hartnett on this occasion, and it's uh, Flannans who are countering at speed. Great play there by their uh, cornerback, uh, Matthew Reddy. And, uh, it's a uh, knockdown, and it's uh, been taken back in again by uh, the cornerback, uh, Gavin Reddy. And uh, returned with interest, which should be all so easy here from the fullback, Dara Healy, playing in that uh, advanced role now, out to uh, Stephen Casey from Ballier. Nice play by Casey. Ops to go kind of cross field, but uh, only waiting for it there was Pierce Cummins. Well, it's a bit of a hospital pass by Cummins, but it uh, falls perfectly for Max Sweeney. And uh, Max Sweeney uh, getting a free there. Uh, the uh, Flannans player had come across with a bit of a chop tackle. And John O'Halloran giving uh, the free out, but uh, Max Sweeney won't be too thankful for the, the pass that was uh, <laughs> setting that no, in motion. Uh, Pierce Cummins has started very well at five, but that was a little bit of a loose one there. But that's good refereeing there now because look. Did, you know he had knocked the ball on too far there was no advantage from the slap down and you go back and give the free Cahalan all the way back out for this one uh, he has a massive strike of a ball don't know though if uh, this one just beyond halfway is within his range even with the huge win behind him but uh, he's going to give it uh, one bit of a wallop anyway uh, had the distance but not the accuracy and that leaves it as uh, CBC one point St. Flannan's two points with uh, just on nine minutes elapsed. And that's the way it is blowing, Colm. It's blowing right over towards the scoreboard, you know. There, it is favouring CBC, but at the same time, there's a pull to the right-hand side. And that's exactly what we saw with that free. Not as dramatic as we saw last night in Oma. Having to allow for it, but you will have to allow for it after a while. It says Dean Rock's effort last night is uh, one that will definitely get into the video vault. Here comes uh, Cian Galvin. Still Galvin. Oh, great block down on Galvin. And that was uh, Connor Hagerty, my apologies. Uh, oh, that comes here in front of us here in the, uh, in the stand. Taken up uh, by the uh, wing back there, uh, Stephen Casey. That's uh, another chop down and it's going to be a, a free in. Another uh, piece of uh, good refereeing by our uh, Limerick official, John O'Halloran. And uh, this time it's uh, Kean Galvin, not uh, Connor Hagerty. I was giving the award to a little earlier. Here comes uh, Kean. Ops to go right across uh, the field in towards uh, his corner forward. Uh, plenty of height on that one there from his uh, wing forward. And that was a fine score there from Killian O'Connor from Cara Finn. And Great ball by Galvin. Yeah, definitely a trend emerging there, though. That, that Killian O'Connor is the go-to guy with the crossfield ball. That's, that's the second time. And instead of laying it off that time, he took on the responsibility. And that's a, a great score from the Cara Finn man. And it's pushed uh, Flannans out to a 3.21 lead. But again, uh, just to mention, there is that extremely strong breeze here this afternoon. And uh, we'll see how much of a factor that's going to be in the course of the afternoon. Cahalan, guilty of uh, fouling Jarlett Collins there. Yeah, and that's two frees Jarlett Collins has just won off Cahalan, so it's interesting. I, I think if I was CBC, I'd be looking at pushing in Cahalan right in, you know, and make Jar Jarlett Collins defend as a, a full-back rather than where he's at the most of the time, he's out right half-back, and it, it suits him because that's where he likes to hurl. King Galvin again with the uh, long delivery down. Finds its way to uh, Oshin O'Donnell. Flannan's offering to work it back. Uh, shot then from distance there by the uh, wing back on this occasion that was <laughs> that was an incredible score I think it was uh, Tony Butler that had the effort in the end um, 
We're glad he's not gone playing rugby after that one anyway. That's, that's a massive yeah, score. I think, I think he even caught by surprise himself yeah, on that well one. You could see the strength that he's gone to. You know, he really has a massive chest on him now and a lot of gym work. And that helped there, I tell you, in the execution of that one because that, that was a huge shot. Massive drop. Uh, Cahalan trying to get under it. Uh, ball bounces off his hand, but he still manages to regain possession. Cahalan there from about 45 yards out. That is a phenomenal strike. That is a phenomenal score. That's a brilliant score. That's a brilliant score by Jack Cahalan because I thought maybe initially there was a little foul on him when the high ball was dropping as well, but he didn't moan about that. He got on with it and, and was there for the break. Won his own ball off the break, ca- travelled with it, and a great score off his left. It's a two point game now. It's uh, four points to two. It's Flannans who lead, and it's Flannans who are in possession. Ball coming back out as far as uh, Tony Butler there. Butler opts to uh, go back a bit of a, a high one there towards. Uh, and it's found its way now to Dear McCahill. Still Cahill. Still Cahill off. Close to Colin Cassidy. Cassidy, lovely jink. Cassidy ball. Oh, into Cahill. What a goal. Back to Cahill. Dear McCahill sticks it into the back of the net. Start of the move. Nice jink to Colin Cassidy. Cassidy fires it back to Cahill. Looked like it had gone a bit too high for him. Someone manages to pull it down. And from oh, that range, brilliant. only one finish. A brilliant, brilliant score. Like, I mean, look at some people <laughs> criticise the way Flannans play, but they're brilliant at this overlapping game. And 1 2 between Cassidy and O'Donnell. Back to O'Donnell. Uh, at the back to Cahill. And Cahill to finish inside. Brilliant, brilliant team goal, if you like. And, and a goal for that style of play. Carrying the ball, popping off the passes. Has to be executed in difficult conditions and a huge score into the wind. And it's pushed it to 1 4 to 2 points, and as Dalo said, into the wind as well. What a game we have here in this uh, Harty Cup. And here comes uh, Flannan again. St. Flannan's the shot, but this time it's uh, taken by the goalkeeper, Owen O'Neill. Not uh, full connection on it. And it's uh, passed all the way back down the field, and there's uh, an injury to uh, one of the CBC players here in front of us. And the uh, mentors are voicing their annoyance there, and the uh, officials are asking them to get back out to uh, Cahalan it is that's after taking a, a hefty blow to know that he's yeah, and, it, and it's Collins as well and, and in actual fact I thought the last time Collins fouled him would you believe in that time I didn't think I thought he turned to get at the ball and he did maybe maybe he caught him but he's hurley as he turned uh, the hurley made, made, made contact with the face guard but I thought he was a bit unlucky that time whereas that, in actual fact for Cahalan's brilliant score previously I thought I thought he was fouled but um, I suppose what goes around comes around and he gets his free I think the linesman sensibly saying it wasn't anything malicious. He's got his free, uh, but there's no yellow cards or anything like that. But chance for him now, do you know, to get a vital score for CBC at an early stage. Well, I can uh, see the uh, officials on the sideline there remonstrating with the uh, match officials. Uh, already we have a smoke bomb that's uh, out on the field, as you can might pick it up there on the uh, side of our camera angle there. And it's... Yeah, Pierce, Ca- Pierce Cummins doing, it, doing his uh, steward job there, going over, taking out the flair. <laughs> and uh, anyway, the end result of it is a free to CBC and a free to uh, Jack Cahalan, the man that was fouled about uh, 55 yards out. Here comes Cahalan. Perfect connection, straight over the red spot, and that has brought it back to uh, three points for CBC. 1 4 to uh, St. Flannans. And it's uh, definitely game on here as the intensity starting to rise. Dara Bach from Douglas, surrounded by three men. Oh, brilliantly taken up by Dara Healy. Super piece of skill by the fullback from Clare Castle. But it's back down the other field here. It's with, with the centre back here. Cahawk Daly pumps it out in front of him. While all of that was going on, we have a man down on the ground. It looks to be Tony Butler is the man that's down. And the referee is calling aside the corner forward, Dara Burke from uh, CBC. Another bit of a melee developing here, down in front of us on the uh, left-hand side, about uh, 22, 23 yards out. Five yeah, we, we, were, we were following the play, Cullum. Um, it was, it was a look, great-looking run by Carrack Daly up, up along the touchline here. Crowd right on top of you, of course. Tensions are up and the, the, the supporters from both schools singing and rising up the, the young lads. But off the ball, Dara Burke and Tony Butler became entangled and John O'Holland saw something. I didn't see it, to be honest. And uh, he's, he's talking to Dara Burke now. So, and Flannans have got a, a very valuable free and a yellow card. Uh, a yellow card for the young corner man. forward and uh, Tony Butler bounced back up onto his feet after the treatment there. So it's a, a yellow card for uh, Dara Burke and it's a, a free out 
for uh, St. Fallon's. And as you said, though, Cahirk Daly, like, that was a lovely piece. Two brilliant pieces of skill from Dara Healy, first of all, and then uh, from uh, Cahirk Daly. The end result is a booming free there from uh, Keen Galvin, working it all the way down. The man that's chasing after this, Killian O'Connor, the go to man down there. Killian O'Connor off his right, and Killian O'Connor with another fine score. Yeah, well, tell Killian, you. Killian O'Connor is really having the game of his life so far. You know, all like Gamby's life might be stretching as we know about all about him. He's he's a great young talent, but he really is the go to guy up up front for Fennon so far and every time Galvin gets a free he's putting that slant on it to put it over to the left wing and he's winning a lot of ball and I'm sure the C B C management must be looking at that at the moment and contemplating a change. C B C looking for a free there as they were uh, claiming that uh, play was being uh, the ball has been fouled. Great play though and oh goal chance here is the corner ball with Robbie Connor. But the ball over spills, over runs, and Keen Broderick is alert to it and manages to clear his lines. And we're back with Tony Butler here. Butler recovered from his uh, earlier exertion. Bit of a rugby star, as we said, and it's uh, worked right across the field here, yet again in front of us. Who's going to get on it? Uh, it's uh, Dear McCall is trying his uh, hardest, but uh, it's taken up by the corner back down there, uh, Owen Downey. Cleared out. Well taken, though, yet again in uh, the middle of the field by uh, Con Connor Hagerty. Back to. Uh, Keen Galvin, who uh, eventually finds its way in to Cahill, the uh, full forward, the shot from distance, though, catching the wind and trailing wide, but uh, we won't be too hard on Cahill after his uh, wonder goal all of five minutes ago. No, no, very dangerous, and he is mixing it, playing outside and inside there. We, we saw the initial ball going in, and he was right inside, alongside Peter Power, so I think they're working the, the central area as well. You know, King Galvin is really coming into the game. Uh, Oshin O'Donnell's come way out from corner forward and picking up a lot of ball. Uh, just that wind took that ball again you have to be really alone for that uh, on that occasion the right to left pull when you're shooting into that goal a yeah, bit of a skirmish to try and get the ball out but uh, eventually it's uh, a Flannins man that emerges with the ball uh, that man is their midfielder Conor Hagerty his uh, effort though is uh, trapped on about the 45 yard line and uh, ends out uh, as a sideline and a sideline to uh, CBC no the uh, linesman is Looks to have changed his uh, opinion in his mind. It looks like it's now going to be a, a line ball there to uh, to Flannans. And uh, on this occasion, it's going to be not uh, Keen but Cullum Cassidy from uh, Clooney Quinn that's going to take it. And uh, given the uh, wind conditions, we wonder what sort of a ploy is in play, pumping it in towards uh, the full forward position. Trying desperately to come up, uh, pulled on first time there by uh, Oshin O'Donnell. Strikes a, a back and it's uh, cleared out with uh, James Dwyer. Dwyer going uh, across the field to Max Sweeney. Cork Miner uh, broke his finger, missed the semi final against uh, Middleton, but has uh, definitely been on the ball quite a lot today. And uh, Dwyer unceremoniously pulled to ground. I think that would come under black car territory. Yeah, would it probably would. Silly, silly tackle by, by Colin Cassidy. L lucky to escape a yellow, actually, in that occasion. You know, it's a blatant pull back, and it does give Cahillan, although it's a long, long way out. Uh, uh, I'm sure he'll, he'll have a cut of it anyway. He's come way back to take it. Okay, well, uh, we saw his effort uh, a few minutes ago. Had the distance, not the accuracy. Will he have uh, learned a bit from uh, that and the wind tra trajectory? Here comes uh, Cahillan, and that is. <laughs> <laughs> in a, on any day a fine score ah yeah if he, like obviously the first one he didn't allow for it enough and uh, he's learned from that that's a good sign of a free taker uh, he's way out the field Collins has gone with him interestingly CBC have put Pierce Cummins across on Killian O'Connor from he was he was operating at left half back he's gone across to his natural right half back now O'Connor was just causing too many problems for CBC and uh, you know they, they have acted on that and uh, obviously put maybe a stronger player over on him Conor Hagerty trying to get a, an action started, but it's uh, kind of gone to ground here and, and see who's going to manage to come out with it. And it looks to be Hartnett, the uh, centre forward for CBC, who comes in to rescue the situation. Forced to go backwards, but there's a, a free a foul committed. It's going to be a free out to uh, CBC. Goalkeeper uh, Owen O'Neill was offering his services to come out, but uh, Owen Downey, I think, is going to uh, take this one. Our game today, the Hearty Cup final, with thanks to uh, the Munster Council being broadcast live on the Irish Examiner's uh, Facebook page. If you are watching around the world or anywhere in Cork, Clare, Ireland, beyond, we'd love to hear your thoughts, your comments, your viewpoints. 
your criticisms even uh, get in touch and we'll uh, get to a few of those as the game progresses if you're a clear man you'll be enjoying the scenes anyway this afternoon uh, Ashley Brown there and well done by uh, Carl who uh, managed to reclaim it but in the end it's taken up by Cahrock Daly a man from Lismore uh, super operator his brother Earlet of course uh, playing last year has uh, progressed on to the Waterford senior team in action uh, this weekend against uh, Tipperary in the uh, Alliance National League here comes uh, CBC again big foot race and that foot race looks to have been won uh, by uh, a CBC man and a brilliant uh, hook there on uh, the corner forward uh, Dara Burke as he was winding up gets it back out as far as Robbie Cotter Cotter swallowed up by one, two, three Flannans men. One of those coming away is Stephen Casey. Casey out as far as his midfielder. That's the man, Connor Hagerty in the green helmet. Back to Tony Butler. Butler scoops it across the field. Taken up there. Coming down the uh, middle channel was uh, Killian O'Connor. Still O'Connor. Nice jink. Still O'Connor. O'Connor from 45 yards line. Oh, that's a great score by Killian O'Connor. That's a wonderful score by Killian O'Connor. Oh, yeah, and I, in the first half alone, he's, he's man of the match territory for sure. Cullum, he, he, but, you know, fantastic. This is what this fans team are all about. Swarm tackling there, getting in the hook on Dara Bork, the, the block on Robbie Cotter, and then breaking by sharp passing and then the diagonal ball. And uh, Killian O'Connor certainly really on, on a go on there today. 23 minutes elapsed and it's at uh, 1-6 to uh, 4 points and it's uh, Flannans who lead and it's uh, Flannans on uh, they love their football too in uh, in Clare and uh, we're getting to see Oshin O'Donnell from uh, Crushin showing his skills there after losing his hurley but it's going to be a, a free out 23 minutes elapsed in this Dr Harty Cup final We've an awful lot of them would be dual players uh, Colum, they, they're very unlucky to lose to uh, the same Killarney uh, in the quarter final I think of the current era so you know might have been a relief to Brendan Bugler and that <laughs> he said he had him full time but I think they led that game one of the days of the big wins and they led by something like 10 points and got reeled in and eventually beaten a point or two by I suppose one of the most or the traditional school in, in colleges football in Munster Keen Galvin nice uh, effort by him as far as he's corner forward Oshin O'Donnell the aforementioned Oshin from Crushing, having a pop from distance but uh, caught by the wind and easily taken by uh, Owen O'Neill from Blarney powerful uh, puck up by him aiming towards Cahalan Cahalan soars up but uh, misses the ball and well taken though by the uh, Flannans defender finding it out as far as uh, uh, Conor Hagerty but uh, Hagerty's effort is uh, caught up and blocked down and returned with interest and it's uh, the uh, wing forward here Owen Kirby Kirby having a, a shot from distance and score from distance as well it, it looked like it had trail wide with the uh, umpires giving that one there to uh, the uh, wing forward that's a great score from distance and uh, very much keeping CBC alive given oh, yeah. the wind conditions Cahalan doing manfully trying to keep the ball in play uh, shouted out and uh, yeah had gone out there the uh, linesman confirming what the uh, St. Flannan's meant on that uh, side of the field I called for and that was a, a line ball to Flannans. Great score by Owen Kirby to be fair to him. Won his own ball out in front, uh, kind of picked Maturidi's pocket if you like, just last second ditched in and, and uh, I thought he might have shot a bit too quickly but he, he didn't and, and he had the accuracy and it was a vital, vital score. Keep him ticking over because look, at the wind is, is significant but it still won't win you the game. Uh, a bit uh, silly there by uh, Flannans given the win, trying to uh, play their way out of trouble when uh, they could have uh, gone direct. Uh, in the end though it's uh, come back out and here comes their uh, co wing forward corner forward Oshino Donald out as far as he, he's wing forward a man wearing number 10 as he judged the wind that man was Ashley Brown for a second it looked like it was on course and then it uh, jiggled and juggled uh, caught up in the wind and that one is uh, trail out wide but like, the far side there should have just let it go yeah like look they do it was a good shooting opportunity but we just haven't learned Dear McCall has had one from that side and Ashley has had one as well now so it is difficult to shoot into that side ok Niall Hartnett having the effort from distance and that one uh, trailing a couple of yards uh, wide you can obviously see the, the ball struggling uh, a small bit on that occasion he's a, he's a huge hearty cup player Niall Hartnett nephew of the great Pat obviously so 
I mean, there's some amount of breeding on show here yeah, <laughs> from okay. both sides. And a bit of football as well, too, in the uh, Douglas DNA as well, too. He's an uh, older brother part of the uh, Cork senior football squad as well. Back with the uh, hurling action here and back with the goal scorer, Cal. Still, uh, dear Mark Cal, holding it up 45. Ops to go back to the man who fed him in the first place, Connor Hegarty. Hegarty looking so lively. Hegarty off his right. The goalkeeper is waving it wide, and so too is the umpire. Yeah, I'm not so sure John, John, John O'Holloran, who would probably be the best view of that, though, is so convinced. He's going straight in to check. Uh, and no Hawkeye and Mallow, I'm no, afraid. No, no, Conor Hegarty didn't protest too much, but Dermot Cahill certainly protested a nice bit. Um, and, uh, John O'Halloran, the match referee from Limerick, having a few words there with his uh, lines, or his umpires. And that one... Uh, Have we had a change it's of heart? It's going to be put up, I think. Yeah. They're yeah. huge moments, Colum, aren't they? It's hard to go find everything can be so tight. They're, they're massive decisions. And he was bang on line with him, though. I'd have to say he was right behind him as he struck it. And the wind would be pulling it naturally inside the post and outside. So we don't know from where we're sitting. But obviously, John made the call. OK, and uh, Conor Hegarty having the uh, point there. And it's pushed it out to 1-7 to 5 points with 27 minutes elapsed in this Harky Cup final. It's, it's had it all in uh, the opening uh, half here this afternoon. Cahrock Daly bursting out looks to be a free end there yeah there was a, an arm from uh, dear McCall around his neck and uh, that's going to be a, a free end and I'd say Daly himself is going to take that one no he'll bring out the full forward I'd say after the last one after the last one yeah, yeah sorry. he's coming a everything is, coming. is vital here yeah, exactly <laughs> especially after that uh, score change there a few moments ago and uh, this one about uh, 10 yards closer in for uh, Jack Cahillan and his uh, previous long range effort dead straight in front of the post currently the score stand is St. Flannan's one goal and seven points CBC five points here comes Jack Cahillan straight and true yeah he's a lovely striker the ball left hand on top and you know really strikes through his ball very well and uh, he, mis he misjudged as we said one early on but talk about learning from it and uh Flannans can't afford to be giving away too many frees with him around. Four points now between the uh, sides in this uh, Hearty Cup final being broadcast live on the Irish Examiner's website, uh, Facebook Live this afternoon. If you're watching around the world, please do get in touch. We'd love to hear from you. Your thoughts on the uh, standard and everything here this afternoon. Now, chance coming for, well, it looked to be Colm Cassidy that was running onto it. It's fallen back as far as Ashley Brown has the runner off his shoulder. That man is Jarlick. Collins, Collins with the effort, Collins though with the wide on this occasion, but again great interplay by Flannans. Yeah, Cal again, they're like, I mean he doesn't do anything else, well he does loads else Colin, but his first thought is to run with the ball and he causes ferocious problems and again he started that move and just again that's their third wide from this right wing here, Jack Collins just misjudging that uh, shot completely in, in a very good position again, like you know, they're not easy positions but it's still a good position for shooting. A lovely offload again to Connor Hagerty and Hagerty swallowing up the ground. Two minutes of additional time coming. Hagerty with the shot from 45 yards out. And what a wonderful score by Hagerty. Took the pop pass, ran 20 yards. Calm yeah. as you like. Second score in a row from Hagerty. What pace he has. Popped him by Galvin. He just put on the, the jets from behind and was absolutely gone, you know. And, and, and then to be able to get the strike in as well. What Speaking a skillful player. A man that is uh, full of skill is Jack Harlan. Being blocked on that occasion. Oh, followed through though on that one with a hefty shoulder to the player who was down collecting it's possession. It's Cahill, I think, yeah. And he, it looks like... He's a guy that comes deep. Or certainly late anyway. I think he just missed... He spilt the ball himself and... Maybe instead of stopping up, he followed through and, and he, he just caught Oshin Cahill fairly heavy and I'm sure there's a yellow coming. Uh, I think to be fair to, uh, to Jack, he, he, his momentum, he had already committed to chasing after the ball. Right. The Flannans man was, was literally going down on the ball and uh, it was a, a, an accidental as opposed to anything else. Yeah, but, uh, and, and, and Oshin is up and look, at that sensible referee again, it was a yellow card, I suppose, but nothing more than that. And, and, and uh, you know, his momentum, as you said, did carry him through on, on top of Oshin. Well, as we were talking about uh, refereeing earlier today, all credit to John. Sensible, well, sensible, sensible. So far, so good. In, in difficult conditions, to be fair, having an excellent game, I think. Keen Galvin uh, picking out his uh, wing forward, Killian O'Connor, and that occasion, O'Connor back to corner forward, Peter Power. Uh, comes to North, though, taken out by uh, Pierce Cummins. First time ball by Cummins, though, is uh, back to the other number five, that's Tony Butler. 
Butler does so well. Look at that upper body strength to uh, hold off the man. And uh, working it across here to um, Kian, to his uh, wing forward, corner forward, Oshin O'Donnell. Uh, Oshin uh, working hard, but uh, so too is the other corner forward. That's uh, Dara Burke. Breaking out here in front of us with uh, Killian O'Connor. Loses it though. And here comes uh, Dara Burke now from Douglas. Burke being uh, held up, looking back for an option to the other corner back. And that's uh, Robbie Cotter. But uh, in between, uh, foul committed. And it's uh, going to be a free in. And that's going to be uh, another chance for Jack Cahalan to anti his tally and to narrow the gap. Currently, it's a uh, CBC six points. It's in Flannan's one goal and eight. So 11 points to six. And uh, this should, should be easy for him, Cullum. And, and, and very good work by Dara Burke. He picked up a yellow early on, but he's he hasn't been shying away from it since. Not worried about the second yellow anyway. He's getting stuck in, and he's the guy coming out deep to try and curb the, the Keen Galvin, Dara Healy influence there coming through the middle. Tony Butler, these guys. Okay. Oh, brilliant piece of feeling there from the uh, puck out there in front of us by Max Sweeney. Ops to go short inside to the big midfielder to James Dwyer. Dwyer running into uh, traffic and Dwyer receiving the free. There was a, an arm across the shoulder and it's going to be another chance for uh, Cahalan. This one though is going to uh, test him a bit. It's out right on the sideline and this surely is going to be the final action of this action pack. First half here this afternoon in Mallow of the Munster Post Primary Schools Dr. Harty Cup. Yeah, James Dwyer receiving a great ball from Max Sweeney who's really come into the game as well because he's also kind of abandoned that wing forward role now and gone to midfield and James come through Jack Collins kind of stood his ground in one way but and John deciding it's a free so it's an important one okay, there goes uh, Cahalan has he judged the wind he hasn't it was only maybe a foot foot and a yeah. half in that one you knew from the second that he struck it that it was yeah. going to struggle with the uh, wind conditions this surely will be the uh, last action a nice piece of handling skill by the match referee as well too to <laughs> We saw that in the Leinster Championship game last year. It didn't go too well. And unfortunately, that wasn't the referee. It was the way for now. We won Gregory Kennedy. <laughs> a good man to catch a ball, as I said, that night on his day. But uh, no, look, I mean, very, very entertaining first half in tough conditions. Uh, game, you know, Flannans would be delighted to be going in four points, uh, having elected to play into the win. But at the same time, it's, it's far from a done deal here. Um, CBC have very, very threatened forwards. And, and Jack Allen just misjudging that one and Flannans have misjudged as well that Breeze is dragging the ball over to the scoreboard side the, the open side, stand side here in, in Mellow and uh, they'll just have to allow for both sides for that in the second half The big scorer of the game Dear McCann's goal Yeah, fantastic goal you know uh, I think started by Oshin O'Donnell who's been playing really lining out at 15 he's back but is everywhere really about the field and uh, it was the one time Killian O'Connor wasn't involved it was Colin Cassidy and it was Dear McCall and Cahill t- took it off O'Donnell, dart and run, one pop pass, took it back from Cassidy, got inside, no room to swing the stick really, but somehow managed to, to pull the trigger and, get, and get, give, you know, give Owen O'Neill very little chance in the goal. Cullum, um, and that's the score that has separated the side so far. Okay, Dalo, we're going to have to take a quick break there and get some uh, coffee or something into you. It's a bit cold here in uh, Mallow this afternoon. Uh, we're going to take a break from our uh, Harty Cup coverage. Uh, don't forget, though, second half still to come live and exclusive here on the Irish Examiner's Facebook page with thanks to the Munster Council. We'll also be uh, looking through some of your comments and thoughts as well, too, uh, in the second half of the game. So that's where we're going to leave it for a few minutes. We're going to be back in about uh, five, ten minutes for the second half of the action here. Please uh, stay tuned for that. Well, welcome back to uh, the second half of the action here, just getting underway, and even before the ball is thrown in, things are already getting underway. Yeah, well, I think uh, Pierce Cummins has brought across to to get a handle on on uh, Killian O'Connor, and Keane Broderick is only just getting da- on his way past the 65 on his way down to the goal. So the two boys getting to know each other. Obviously, CBC has said, "Look, this guy has, is doing rack on us so far, so we got to get tight and get tougher on him." So when the bugler out to tell his man to calm it down and I'm not sure <laughs> he'll be happy if he, if he comes up with three more points and play exactly a few people getting in touch as well having an issue with our broadcast quality this afternoon issues beyond our control here it's uh, to do unfortunately with the broadband here in uh, Mallow 
and uh, possibly the crowd that's here as well it's impacting on our upload speed so sincere apologies if the stream is breaking on you we're uh, doing our utmost to try and rectify that at the moment and uh, hopefully we will manage to get something but as i said unfortunately situation not of our making uh, this afternoon uh, very quickly as we're waiting for Jack Alan to, to take this free one to say hello to Dara Burke's dad uh, Dara of course corner forward for uh, CBC his dad Owen is watching from Canada and all the Burke's Crowleys and Parkers who are watching in London and in Switzerland this afternoon will they be cheering in uh, 30 minutes time well uh, let's see what uh, this man here can do to try and reel in the St. Fannin's lead and unerring accuracy yet again from uh, Jack Cahalan and uh, just less than a minute elapsed in the uh, opening half and we're now back to a three point game yeah great work by Dennis McSweeney in the middle of the field straight from the throw in to win the free and Cahalan maybe he missed one or two in the first half but that's a, that's a vital score back to a one score game and as we said this game is far from done at half time and I presume everybody in the Flannan's dressing room will be saying that as well Okay, Keen Galvin and uh, he's at uh, full back uh, working well together and uh, off we go again down that uh, far side from the wing forward from Ashley Brown and uh, Brown now having uh, the wind at his back and uh, driving that one uh, wide and with the wind uh, every one of these scores now the danger now for Fannins is they play a set game move the ball carry the ball and if they start shooting from distance now and that wind has gotten a little bit stronger across the field it will pull every shot towards the scoreboard the open stand side Powerful uh, puck out yet again by uh, Owen O'Neill. And it's uh, been found by uh, Max Sweeney, who's uh, certainly impressed this afternoon. Uh, wasn't on the uh, starting team. A late call up for Owen O'Leary. Cork Minor uh, recovered from those uh, broken fingers. And I must say, caught the eye in the course of the afternoon and uh, another free being won there and another opportunity for Jack Alan to, yeah, to nudge into that great work by McSweeney but silly silly free by King Galvin to give away I mean the sideline was his friend there the, you know McSweeney was going away from goal but uh, he, he pulled across him from behind and late and if you don't make contact with the ball that's always going to be a free so a chance for Cahillan to bring it back to two Jack Cahalan again, the man is absolutely on fire this afternoon, unerring uh, that bit of a miss earlier, but has uh, recovered so much from it. And as you pointed out there, Pierce Cummins and uh, Killian O'Connor getting to know each other. Fla St. Flannans from being in a position of authority in half time are, are nearly doing all in their power to undo it and uh, getting involved in a few little niggles off the ball as well again a, a correct call by John O'Holler and Tony Butler did over carry the ball but in fairness uh, to likes of Niall Harn it was the pressure he was put under if he did throw it up to play it it would have been flicked away from him went to the short puck out from Kim Broderick he has a great long puck out but that's the style of game they play if, it, if you get over the winning line it's great Cullen but you do leave teams in the match and Cahillan now a chance to bring it back to a single score Cahillan a couple of inches inside the uh, 65 yard line here he comes again Catch that, catches that one to perfection brilliant brilliant start to the second half by, by CBC uh, complacent sort of start from Flannans I have to say you know CBC come right out, you know, laying down the marker, Pierce Cummins maybe. Not too pretty what he did, but got the crowd behind him and, and they've certainly responded in kind on the pitch. Oh, well, we're in for a blistering second half of this hearty cup if the opening few minutes are anything to go by on this occasion. CBC's hard work with James Dwyer undone over carrying the ball and Flannan's desperately and definitely in need of a, a break in fortune there, yeah. anything to stop that CBC momentum. Yeah, and, and I suppose you, you, you can't have it everywhere, Cullum, and there's no doubt James Dwyer did over carry a step or two, wasn't much in it. He kind of half slipped, which, which cost him the time factor, I suppose, and uh, big, big free now for, for King Galvin to push it out to two if he can, because, uh, you know, they, they just haven't functioned since we came out for the first four and a half minutes, so this might steady the ship has to be going for the left post to draw it across. King Galvin from Clare Castle. Low trajectory. Gets the score. A little fist pump there from Anthony Daly alongside me. That was... Well, I know four minutes into the second half and we're already saying that was a very important score. I'd be very critical of, of the free he gave away and he'd know I would be. <laughs> I'd be telling him that if I had him tomorrow morning, but that's a that's a that's a ballsy one, Cullum, when you go back to feel like that and stand up to a feel like that in you know, cross wind and, and that kind of thing. And 
things not going well and he you know he's great like that bit uh, unsightly there as the ball glued to the ground eventually being uh, brought up looked to be Max Sweeney that got it in and as far as uh, his uh, corner forward but it's been uh, batted away there by the uh, full back by Dara Healy and it's uh, coming out at pace here in front of us and Tony Butler is the man that's going to offload a lovely cross field effort towards Peter Power the man from Newmarket and Fergus who's chasing after it but it's Shane Kingston the full back who's getting his body in the line there and it's going to be a free out goalkeeper uh, was coming out for it but uh, Owen Downey was uh, telling him stay back but uh, I think uh, Owen O'Neill has overruled him and he's going to they usually do call him onto the goal he's been down the fancy these ones great play by Shane Kingston there because uh, basically a foot race with Peter Power and he just got himself across in front of him and uh, drew the free and r- relieving free for CBC the man from Blarney Owen O'Neill uh, powerful puck out by him oh, up went uh, Keane Galving in an effort to get to it but it uh, breaks down and it's uh, Overlap here. Look at the pace by Tony Butler there getting on to still Butler trying to get down on it, but uh, well taken back up by uh, CBC. Look to have fouled it there. It was the wing back Pierce Cummins, referee letting it off there with corner forward Dara Burke, who's dad watching in Canada this afternoon. Dara Burke in as far as his uh, midfielder James uh, James Dwyer goes to ground, been brought out by uh, the other midfielder Tony Butler. Nice little uh, one two brought down to ground again and it's out with the uh, full forward there Dermot Cahill the goal scorer from the first half Cahill fouled and that's going to be a free there breathtaking and we only have six minutes gone yeah, in the second yeah. half huge huge second half here Colum and you couldn't get the intensity levels I mean this is up there with you know, there'll be National League games that people are at today and they won't see the intensity here the tackling the hitting brilliant tough play from Dermot Cahill one of the smallest guys in the field there got down over that ball when, when the belt was likely held it and Drew the free and uh, again, this is a, a massive relief and free. Whether 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 Keane will feel he has the distance here, he's like a fella that's having a go anyway. Well, Jack Callan had the distance from a very similar position in the first half. Let's see can Keane Galvin match him. Doesn't seem to have uh, gotten the same strike on it. Managed to creep over the crossbar. We had to wait there for a second. For one second, it looked like it had dipped. I, I, I thought from our angle it was definitely over the bar because you could see it was clearly well inside the, the far over umpire's head but there seemed to be total confusion as there was in the first half yeah, the, 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 the umpire closest to it remained motionless uh, for it nice bit of uh, feeling out there by Max Sweeney off his left uh, but comes to naught it's uh, easily taken up by, by Flannans here in front of us uh, Killian O'Connor the man that has been starring so much in the first half effort from O'Connor Gone wide. Should he have taken it on? He, he might have. He just might be alone a bit more. You know, Galvin is sitting in the pocket doing really well now since he got back there to his natural sort of roll. Lovely ball up along the line. Killian obviously being more tightly marked. But uh, again, that pull towards the scoreboard side. Powerful uh, puck out by the uh, goalkeeper, Owen O'Neill. Well taken by the big man that is the uh, joint captain, Niall Hartner from Douglas. Foul committed. And that only means one man. That's Jack Cahillan. And he's standing over the uh, ball now. Great catch by young player Niall Hartnett. You know, a great battle with Stephen Casey, who's been picking him up. Casey, great first half. That's a massive catch uh, by Hartnett there. <laughs> it's not he's easy. He's a joint of a, he's Actually, he's a massive man. 6'1, 6'2. Six, 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 There's uh, Cahalan there. Has he judged the wind in this occasion? No, no. Just caught up there and uh, taken on the uh, line by uh, Connor, by uh, Keen Galvin. Back here in front of us with uh, Max Sweeney again. I must say, really impressed by this uh, young man. He's uh, only uh, 17. On that occasion, the uh, ball, though, taken by uh, Matthew Reedy. Oh, to his uh, Ashley Brown. He's a uh, wingman. Uh, Brown's uh, pass kind of managing to eventually find its way into uh, Clare Castleman. That Clare Castleman is the uh, midfielder wearing number eight, Connor Hagerty with uh, the shot going uh, wide I- is there a policy do you think now with um, Flannans won't they get into that kind of 50 yard area ha- have a pop it's kind of natural that column. you know that you can feel the wind at your back you have a bit of space Conor Hagerty you know would be always a good man to, to take his score and uh, he's got a quite a nice little tap on the head there that time uh, the ball was knocked down by Stephen Casey but uh, he's, there's a little tinkin I think uh, for, for maybe for Max Sweeney is it yeah. But uh, it's a free now, and Galvin will be having another go at this. And if they could shove it back out to the the half time gap of four points, it'll be psychologically, psychologically. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we're we're on the same wavelength there. Call, uh, you know, it'll be huge because you'd be saying that look at we weather the storm now. Can we kick on? But it's a it's a tough free. And it's a, it's a presumptions. It's a tough free. He's uh, 
he's right on halfway had uh, the uh, accuracy and the distance just from uh, a free maybe uh, five six yards farther out and uh, as you can see there's a little sweet wrapper or something there and the pitch is just showing the way that the wind is flickering and blowing across the field here comes galvin doesn't seem to have connected again on this one and it's uh, gone wide didn't seem to back himself on that one yeah, whether there was a way he didn't lift it properly, I'd say, Colm, or whether the wind slightly caught it as he lifted it and brought it back, kind of a half a foot maybe, and then you're snatching, and when you're snatching, you're in trouble because Shane Kickson is really strong at fullback, really impressed with him. You know, a hard job for Peter Power because often he's isolated up there two on one, maybe three on one at times. A short uh, puck out to Pierce Cummins, all on his own, and sideline Cummins using uh, the elements to his advantage. A great puck down by him. It's uh, taken up uh, down here by the uh, fullback Dara Healy. Oh, nice bit of play by him. Well, as far as Keen Galvin, nice interplay with uh, Cahill. Still Cahill, small man, but a huge engine. Great ball in to Galvin. Still Galvin on the edge of the exclusion zone. That is a wonderful score by Keen Galvin and St. Flannens. What a passage of play from the fullback Dara Healy to Galvin. Galvin to Cahill. Cahill back to Galvin. And a wonderful, wonderful score. Yeah, a point, a point version of the goal, if you like, uh, Colum. And uh, significant, as we said, about the four-point gap. Great player from Dara Healy. Got his head up. Played Galvin. Galvin to, to, to Cahill. What a, a man with close control and running Cahill is. And Galvin followed on the run. And that's what Bugler would always encourage. And, and he's there on his shoulder. Brilliant finish off his left. And that's the point of the game. If we saw the goal of the game, which is the only goal, obviously. But... Uh, uh, that's a great score uh, uh, as well. What was remarkable as well was Galvin had to, to reach for the ball but didn't break stride, managed to pull it back, as, as we saw in the goal mo movement as well. Yeah. It wasn't a, a simple ball into the breadbasket. No, no, and, and we know it as a swirling wind, so great close control and you know, great skill from these young players. Absolutely incredible skill, and it's pushed it back out to a four point lead for uh, the men from Ennis from uh, St. Fallon's College. It's out uh, with uh, CBC, though, now in front of us with their corner forward turning goalwards, and that's uh, Robbie Cotter. Cotter judging the window perfectly, and Cotter putting it over the uh, crossbar and a vital score for him. Yeah, Cotter, second score from play as well, I think, and, and set up by Dara Bork. Really impressed with Dara Bork since he came out from the corner. We did say he got a yellow, but he's well involved in everything good that CBC are doing, and uh, they're definitely staying in the game. Very, very determined performance from them, and, you know, very, very much, as I said, determined is the right word because they're not willing to let Flannans out of their sights. A reminder again that we will have to have a result this afternoon because uh, these two teams will be out in action in the Crow Cup quarterfinals and those games having to be played next weekend. The winners will be playing St. Kieran's College of Kilkenny and the losers will be playing Presentation of Athen Ryan. As I said, those games have to be played next weekend to keep the sequence of the competition going. So if it is a case that we are level here at the uh, full-time hour, we will be going to extra time and uh, penalties if required thereafter anyway still a good bit of hurling still to be played here this afternoon and oh, a lovely piece of skill there by uh, Jack Allan as he flicked it over the defender but was held back and that's going to be a free in from uh, Cahalan well you mentioned uh, how good a footballer he was Colum and, and the men he's marking is actually a brilliant footballer as well Jack Holland's nephew of, of Colum Collins the, the clear football manager and but he, he sold him a pup there, didn't he? He just threw it over his head and, and Jad didn't get his feet moving. And uh, once he stood his ground and the ball was gone, uh, John O'Halloran had no other option but to give the free in. And again, as we said, like C CBC really showing huge determination. Not an easy free again at the angle, but this to bring it back to two. Here comes uh, Cahalan as it, the wind, as I said, swirling off the uh, post and just trickles out over the uh, sideline. The look of uh, disgust, or the inline, should I say, the look of disgust there in uh, Jack Cahalan's face. Even though he's 50 yards away from us, you can see he was so disappointed with that one there. Literally a game of inches on that occasion. The uh, grey crowds in the background. Great piece of fielding there by the uh, wing forward, Killian O'Connor. The shot, has it gone? No, it's gone right and wide, but uh, did all the hard, but they're soared up into the air. Substitute being warmed up for St. Fannins. That man is James Doherty, another man from uh, Clare Castle being warmed up. 
We'll have a look and to see who's going to be coming off in a few moments' time. The Clare Castle contingent increasing here this afternoon. 11 points to 111. St. Fallon's lead as we come up with 15 minutes of the second half. 45 minutes of this. The Munster Council post-primary schools. Dr. Harty Cup final this afternoon. He's a, he's a great prospect, uh, James Dart. He's only under 16. I know there's a few of the CBC boys that young as well, but he'd definitely be the youngest of the, the Flannans panel. And uh, what a great lad. Like, he's not afraid to put himself about for a small lad. And... Uh, great future if he can keep it up hopefully and we can start to nurture him hopefully at home and uh, Garod Mulcahy with the uh, sideline kept in place who probably down there looks to be uh, Jack Cahalan still Cahalan has a uh, runner inside him opts to go back out as far as uh, Owen O'Leary Owen O'Leary O'Leary back out onto uh, the field uh, was due to start this afternoon Cahalan going right across the field Keane Galvin though reading the intention breaks though to uh, Hartnett still Hartnett still Hartnett Hartnett trying to bat it and bats it wide calls for a penalty there but that referee waving those calls away with Hartnett using his massive frame to punch his way through there Colm Cassidy is the man by the way that's going to be making way there for uh, the substitute yeah big goal chance for CBC there uh King Galvin dropping the ball, read it very well, ball across uh, from Cahillan, seemed to have it caught and under control, dropped it, Hartnett was onto it like a flash, and it, they bottled him up all right, but he, he managed to get a, a bat on the ball, and it just went outside. Kind of Jamie Callan effort. Yeah, it went just sort of, uh, Colin Fenley more like, more, you know, would be more famous for those ones, a very intelligent thing for the forward to do always, but it just went outside uh, Kane Broderick's post, thankfully for Flannan's point of view anyway. We're back with the action on the uh, 65 yard line, uh, 45 yard line, and it's uh, back with uh, an effort from distance. It's been waved over the crossbar. Oshin O'Donnell from about 55 yards. The ball, he turned away, saluted the crowd. Oh, he knew it was on its way. An absolutely brilliant strike from, from Oshin O'Donnell. I, I, I didn't think it was the right option to be honest with you because he was off the back foot but he just got enough borrow on it and the wind did the rest and a brilliant brilliant score and again significant out to the, the four point zone again Colin which will, which will be huge huge for Flannans at this stage Hartnett and uh, Garod uh, Mulc- uh, Mulcahy endeavouring there to work together to get possession there but uh, there's a Flannans man down on the ground looks to be possibly Tony Butler I think with the, the red helmet over there but uh, there's going to be a few words from uh, the match officials and uh, I'd say it's going to be a throw ball in the end between the uh, two midfielders between James Dwyer and uh, Connor Hegarty still kind of getting down to ground again just to mention uh, the game being broadcast with thanks to the Munster Council this afternoon wherever you're watching in the world thank you for joining us this afternoon and hopefully our uh, technical issues have now been resolved and our uh, coverage and our feed are back on uh, your computer, your laptop, your screen, whatever it might be. Uh, and again, apologies, the uh, issues beyond our control here in Mallow this afternoon. Here comes uh, CBC, nice little uh, interplay between the goalkeeper and his uh, fullback in Kingston, but uh, superbly blocked down by Stephen Casey from Ballier, out as far as Killian O'Connor and a free in again. What the score almost the way the fist pumping is going on. This this lad, Killian O'Connor, has been immense today, David. Yeah, he, he wins the free and he has had a great game. A couple of wides in the second half that he'd be disappointed with. Have to point out Stephen Casey as well, who's had the man mark and roll on Hartnett. That's some block there. Gets across. Pierce Cummins had taken a shot from, from his keeper and he made great ground. And, and Casey kind of abandoned ship and came out to meet him. And that's a fantastic. And it was the block that caused Killian O'Connor to win possession to get the free chance for Galvin long long one again here comes King Galvin much better connection on it this time not the accuracy though and uh, just trailing uh, wide is is there a plan B in terms of plans for the free taking uh, no, no 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 they've been mad because that's the type of guy he's, he's you know it doesn't bother him he's, he's a good man to as yeah. the fella says erase the mistake and get on with it yeah Starman um, and, yeah, uh, he, against Temple Moore six points absolutely and he missed the two in the first half that day as well but there's no no he won't let that bother him and he you know maybe you might be as well have to commit a man or two forward and go short on those ok uh, nice uh, ball in as far as the corner forward Peter Power there Power though and uh, the defender Mr. Shane Kingston in a bit of a tussle but uh, CBC managing to do very well there to clear their lines aiming towards Niall Hart at the big hand by Hart and coming out breaking it down as far as uh, uh, Ono Leary uh, came on as uh, a substitute was in the uh, starting programme but has been uh, introduced since 
Flannan's going right across the field in front of us and the ball well taken by goal scorer Dermot Cahill. Nice play by Cahill out as far as Killian. Killian O'Connor that is. Still Killian O'Connor knocks past two players, gets the shot off and gets the score. Class, class, class from Carl Finn. Yeah, and uh, as I said, the teammates linking up again from that minor final of last year and uh, great ball across the field from Conor Hager. He opened the play completely up like a, like a great ball in soccer, if you know what I mean. He just, all the play was at the open side. He just switched the play completely. Cahill got onto it, fell, managed to get the pass out to Killian O'Connor and uh, cut inside and this time the... The, 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 the radar was in as the fella says and he nails a great score he's fourth from play and he's had a hand in a few scores to be fair powerful clearance done by Owen Downey the man from uh, Glen Rovers Hartnett again the intended target but I think Flannans are well aware of the danger that he's posing and they're trying to surround him with as many people as possible when the, the ball is in his orbit the ball is uh, now in the orbit of uh, Connor Hagerty Hagerty pumping it down as far as Killian O'Connor but uh, uh, CBC back in numbers, Cahirock Daly chasing after it, Daly 45 yards out, still Cahirock Daly, he's got runners to his uh, right, Dennis McSweeney was one of those, Jack Allan is on his shoulder as well, there's a man screaming for it, that man that uh, has it is the uh, wing back there, Garod Mulcahy, Mulcahy going uh, short it's, uh, with the corner forward there, Robbie Cotter, Cotter, still Cotter, held up, Cotter 21 yards out, flips it high up into the air, Bodies are funneling back under it. One of those is Max Sweeney. Great catch by Max Sweeney. Shot off the, off the crossbar. Still there in the danger area. Won't be cleared out, will it? It is, and it's King Galvin that's doing so. But what a shot from King Galvin. Had the keeper beaten all ends up off the crossbar. And Flamin's working it all the way back down to Dear McCall at the far end of the field. Cal, the man that scored the goal in the opening half. Loses possession, taken up there by uh, CBC. Uh, oh, and brought down to ground is the cornerback, Gavin Reddy, and that's going to be a free in. What a shot, though, from McSweeney, out of nothing. Yeah, high drama, high drama, and Trezo Callahan rightly had spotted that McSweeney was loose. And, and uh, in fairness to Robbie Cotter, to be able to get the ball, the, the width of the field, into the wind, across to him, caught it, went for the goal. Stood up, Keen Broderick in the goal, and it stood up to it well. Got his hurley to it, bounced around the square. Somehow got over it and got it out. I think to Oshin O'Donnell who cleared the lines, and uh, it results eventually in, in CBC winning a free in and um, chance to cut it back to four. I presume they'll go for the point. Yeah, flip back off the uh, off the crossbar, bobbled around the ground, and uh, here we are. The end result anyway is uh, Jack Callan standing over this free. Just over uh, 65 yards out. Another substitute uh, coming on there in front of us. Uh, number 27, Dennis McSweeney, who, 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 who almost scored the goal yeah, a few moments he, ago. He, he's a huge loss to Cullum with, with probably the, the, the eight minutes plus maybe two or three injury time coming off because he, he's had a magnific magnificent second half to be fair to him. David really Kremen. Really show, showed standard uh, uh, county minor. David Kremen is the man that's uh, coming on. Substitute as well to... Um, I think for uh, Flannan's being uh, wound up as well there. Jack Allan doing the needful, by the way, as we're talking. Uh, substitute on the uh, Flannan's team. And that's uh, number 13, Peter Power being replaced by the man wearing number 24, Dylan Cunningham of Clooney Quinn. Yeah, Dylan Cunningham, another young forward. Uh, Peter Power puts in his ferocious shift every day. Got his point early on to settle the nerves. Uh, he has a tough job up there in his own a lot of the time. Ala uh, Shane O'Donnell back in the day, but uh, does, it, does it willingly and manfully. Uh, 113 to St. Flannan's, 12 points to uh, CBC, 23 and a half minutes uh, elapsed in this uh, Dr. Harty Cup final. With thanks, by the way, to the uh, Munster Council for making this live stream possible this afternoon. Again, apologies about some technical issues in the uh, first half. Again, uh, the issues beyond our control and hopefully all resolved now. James Doherty is the man from uh, Clare Castle that came on as a substitute. And James Doherty on this occasion driving it wide. There was a Clare Castle man next to me. Willing that one over the bar, doing his uh, very best. Yeah, well, he'd be disappointed. Uh, fantastic work by Killian O'Connor again, you know, uh, winning the dirty ball, cutting through the middle, popped off the James Darty and maybe snatched at that one a little bit. Uh, should have taken, taken it on a step or two. Just uh, confirmation of the attendance here. Just under 3,000 here this afternoon. Dalo, you were talking about some Alliance yeah. League games today. And you can imagine maybe if it was yesterday and we weren't coming up against the Alliance League games and we had lovely spring conditions as we'd hoped for this time of the year, you could maybe add on a couple of 1,500 or so to that, Colin, because uh, certainly, you know, a great crowd, everyone really enjoying the fair from, from Mellow here. Uh, 
an injury there to uh, Killian O'Connor. Uh, he's uh, receiving the, the magic bottle and the, the sponge. And he's uh, back on his feet. And it's going to be a free to uh, St. Flannan's. And it's going to be a free to uh, Kean Galvin. Has had a, a run of misses in the last uh, two or three. Struggling with uh, range and accuracy. Let's see how he's going to fare on this occasion. Well, Anthony Daly said he's a man that puts the misses behind him very quickly. Proved you right there. Ah, uh, yeah. I, I look at it, I'd have been lucky enough to... to this year's my first year involved with Keane, but I'd have coached these two older brothers, and confidence would never be a problem. They'd stay at it. It's a clear castle thing. <laughs> it used to be, Colum. <laughs> Hopefully it can come back to me. Back in action with uh, St. Flannans and with uh, another clear castle man, as we said, Keen Galvin. Galvin opting to uh, go back as far as his uh, wing back there. Nice little uh, offload from uh, the uh, wing back Stephen Casey to the man wearing number 15. And that was Oshin O'Donnell. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful interplay. Oh, ah, yeah, and a couple of great scores from Oshin O'Donnell in this second half. And that looks as if maybe it is enough of a gap. You'll be hoping and Bardic Flannans can see the goal from their point of view. Uh, great work again from Stephen Casey. Can't say how good he has been as a natural centre back, even though he's wearing seven today. Man Mark and Hartland and has done a brilliant job as well as contributing so much in a, from an attacking point of view from Flemings. Yes, uh, we're uh, coming up of the uh, final five minutes of the action here in this uh, Harty Cup final. It's uh, currently CBC, 12 points, St. Flannans, one goal and 15. Another substitute coming on for uh, the Flannans team. The man wearing number 10, Ashley Brown, making way. And it's uh, Darren Nagel of St. Joseph's Dora Bearfield is uh, the man that's uh, coming in. We were talking about the all clear aspect of this uh, team. When you were playing Dale, was there many non non clear God, natives? There was those five Limerick miners on the team that I played with, and a tip miner who was the captain, Justin Quinlan. So, but the rest, you had nine clear lads, I suppose. That was the, probably the form. I, I think uniquely in '79, there was an all clear team with borders there. But more uniquely about this team, Colm, is meeting Tulla in the quarter final, you'll be looking at the Tulla club players, and half of them will be lads that traditionally would have come into fans. Yes, you know, yeah. Clooney Quinn lads, even. Durabairfi lads and uh, even some Tulla lads I mean they don't get lads really from Six Mile Bridge anymore like, and we've always got those lads in the past even Shannon lads you know so that's the huge achievement about this team I think you know and what an extended panel they have as well and you know, it's great great credit you to these guys who took them from first year right up along Yeah, request there for no one to go out onto the field afterwards because uh, there is another game coming on. We'll get back to that with uh, Carrock Daly. Oh, beautiful skill by Carrock Daly. Punches it twice. Shot by him. Oh! Trickles right across the front of the goal. Still kept in play, though, by Robbie Cotter. Cotter with the shot. And it's gone out. The ball had gone wide. The ball had gone wide. Carrock Daly. Yeah. Two incredible pieces of skill there from him. The flick over. The shot across. Rolling right across the front of the goal. Yeah, and I would have said we haven't seen him at his very best today. I heard an awful lot about him. Obviously, his brother, a great player, the Wofford man and, uh, from Lismore, but really showed his class there right through the middle, slightly mishit the shot, and Niall Hartnett seemed to be on the end of it for just a little tap, tapping goal, and just maybe took his eye off it, or it bobbled, and it got away from him and went out wide, and a huge let off for St. Flannans. Oshin O'Donnell after making way, and it's uh, Ryan Powers, the man that's uh, after coming on for... Uh, St. Flannans, who are just after registering a wide on that occasion as we're ticking into 28 and a half minutes of this uh, Dr. Harty Cup final. Six points between the sides, but uh, CBC, to their credit, still battling desperately to try and uh, save their chances in this competition. They will still be in the All-Ireland series. The two teams will be progressing from this afternoon, but only one will be progressing as champions of uh, Munster. I mentioned there another game on here this afternoon, ladies' football. The uh, Little uh, National Football League Division One clash of Clare and Mayo, or Cork, excuse me, and Mayo taking place here this afternoon was due to start at two o'clock, but I think has been pushed back to uh, three o'clock this afternoon because of uh, today's final. So uh, the pitch here and the ground staff in uh, Mallow uh, under pressure. 
but they've done a wonderful job in uh, getting us through given all the rain over the last uh, two weeks three minutes of additional time being uh, waved on and Jack Callan is the man that's on the ball can this man magic something in the remaining few minutes of this Harty Cup final opts to go short uh, was looking for Carrock Daly Daly wasn't on the same radar forced to go back there's Daly sells a dummy one way still Daly 21 14 yards tries to get it in but it's taken by the other centre back Keen Galvin blocking up in front of his goalkeeper good play by the uh, centre back it's the uh, substitute that's uh, just on a few moments ago Rowan Parr losing the ball CBC desperately trying to uh, get something here in the last few moments and uh, they have to go for goal now as the clock hits 30 minutes and 3 minutes of uh, additional time to play the, apart from the goalkeeper there's only one other CBC man in uh, the half ball oh brilliant stop there on the line hits into the chest of Dara Healy I'm not sure who got the shot off but Healy was perfectly positioned taking the blow into the chest and clearing it out over the line right on the side yeah, yeah good move by Keane Broderick to call him back into the goal with him I don't know what, who got the touch, maybe Hartnett, he's, he's the big guy in there obviously, but dropped in looking for the goal and somebody got a clean flick on it and uh, it, Dara happened to be in the right place at the right time and uh, a crucial block, okay. maybe they have enough but at the same time if a goal goes in now you have a nervy, you know, whatever is played on, uh, so vital they don't concede a goal, points are okay at this stage. Okay, the uh, referee that uh, free that was uh, played in there, uh, obviously there was some infringement or something, uh, referee deeming that the free had to be taken again and uh, this time it's uh, gone out as a sideline and uh, here we go again obviously this is going to be dropped in to the danger area the Flannans fans starting to sing already with uh, two minutes remaining in this uh, Munster Post Primary School's Harty Cup final there's uh, a man down on the ground is he tying a maybe perhaps tying a lace or something more but uh, yeah Some uh, laughter here at the uh, reminder not to go out onto the field at uh, full time. So I think that's going to be uh, an issue here this afternoon. I'd say they don't have enough officials <laughs> somehow to keep the crowd off the field after this. Opting uh, to go short instead of uh, dropping it in and uh, bodies flooding, trying to get that ball on the ground or off the ground depending on your, uh, on your stance or your colours. Blocked down and it's uh, ruined power again. Orion power from Rowan loses it CBC is trying to funnel it through still Cahirock Daly is the man that's uh, been pulled back and it's going to be a free end and one wonders will uh, Jack Callan be entrusted with a, a blaster from 21 yards uh, he'll have to and in fairness to Daly since he has kind of gone up the field now Flannans have near a player at all outside their 21 you'd imagine you could keep one guy up <laughs> just in case to break out but you are kind of inviting him onto you now look at maybe six points is enough Conor Hagerty gets a yellow for pulling back Carrick Daly and I think maybe Callan is definitely yeah he has to have a goal for goal at this stage it's uh, one two three four five six seven eight Flannan's men well there's a couple of them now after departing the scene we're back to about uh, one two three four five and uh, here comes Jack Callan. Somehow manages to be stopped with the uh, with the legs there, and uh, it's going to be a free out. And uh, in interesting to see one of the key men that was there, and I think the man that got the touch in the end to stop it was Killian O'Connor. Yeah, I'm not I'm not certain, but he he was back there on the line anyway. He he he's a ball of energy, isn't he? Full forward, goal line. Uh, hard to tell actually who saved it now we, we, you know we, we'd see it maybe closer up later on but it looks to be you know enough for fans at this stage and uh, t title number 22 on, on the way back to the, the famed, famed nursery in it Keen Gallon with a massive relieving uh, clearance there putting uh, CBC back on the uh, on the back foot oh great piece of handling there by Shane Kingston to pull that one down and hold off the uh, tackle from Killian O'Connor has been awarded the free must be nearly the last action big ball by James Dwyer down Jack Allen is uh, chasing after it and uh, get to grips with it has he managed to get it being held back trying to get the ball off referee awarding a free in there's a Flannans man down on the ground the uh, Flannans supporters rushing to the far side of the field 
Um, question is, will they uh, follow the protocol of staying off the pitch? Uh, things getting a bit ugly now. A few skirmishes developing off uh, in front of the goal mouth there. And you'd wonder really with the time now at 34 minutes would, uh, would referee John O'Halloran be as well to just blow this one. As, uh, imagine being that poor steward on the far side of the field there entrusted with uh, keeping that crowd back I think he's on the walkie talkie calling for reinforcements we're going to need a bigger boat I think <laughs> <laughs> I know Fennan's youngsters have gone to generation without seeing the hearty cup being lifted so any of those invading the field were lucky to be in preschool the last time Fennan's were, were winning this and a lot of them weren't even the players are only around that uh, age group now so They've waited a long time and uh, they'll be they'll be delighted. There's something absolutely dramatic goes wrong near the end. I think it's Conor Hagerty, giant captain that's down injured. I think I'm trying to see is he in the goal. I don't think he is, and I think it might be a green helmet that's that's down. So um, they'd be anxious, of course, if, if the winners of this go up against St Kieran's College next week. So you uh, <laughs> you'll need everybody for that, and you won't need too much celebrating either tonight. Yeah, but the. Uh the look there from the uh, sideline and from the benchers is that uh, whoever it is won't be returning to the uh, field of play and uh, is being gingerly helped up well spotted there Dalo I think uh, God bless the eyesight looks to be Connor alright and uh, it looks to be in some discomfort uh, back with the play it's uh, Jack Allen standing over the ball he's going to lop it in towards the square and it's a uh, whole host of bodies there one of those trying to get it up is uh, the corner forward I can't uh, get to it and it's a bit of a, a scrum there will there be a shot trying to get off there uh, no yeah, penalty penalty this time Colum, yeah. so a bit of drama there at the end it's uh, 12 points to CBC Flannan's one goal and 15 even if this I is converted Carl Daly was dragged like he, he's, he's certainly since he went up the field and uh, kind of abandoned the, the centre back role they, very much so they don't seem to be able to stop him unless they pull him down and again like he's won another uh, free this time this time being a penalty now so we have uh, Jack Allen and Keane Bodrick going eye to eye will it be the last action or will the puck out be allowed you yeah. never know here comes uh, here comes Jack with the effort and strikes it through strikes it low no chance for the goalkeeper Keane Bodrick on that occasion and has brought it back to a three point game I think, I think the referee is not coming out the field column so I think yeah. Flannan's win back has, to Cup. has called for the match ball and St. Flannan's College of Ennis have been crowned Hearty Cup champions for the 22nd time in their history, their last title all of 15 years ago. The calls for the fans to stay off the uh, pitch, well, fallen on deaf ears, and who would blame them? Ah, not a hope, sir. That's part and parcel of the Hearty is the pitch invasion afterwards. And, uh, you know, just see Conor Hagerty seems to be, while there's massive celebrations down around the goal, Conor, Conor, who's joint captain, seems to have taken a nice little knock, so just hope he's okay. Joint captain had a great game as well today. Uh, you know, they were the better side overall. I think, you know, they took their chances. I suppose the four point lead was very significant. Uh, Column at half time, we knew it wasn't a game defining lead, but uh, they, they certainly, you know, they held it at that despite the great start. CBC gave it the start of the second half. Once they pushed it back out to four, you always felt. Now, they did invite CBC on again at the end. and and the final score will show, you know, a one one goal victory, but probably a bit more value for that. And uh, you know, a fantastic, fantastic display by Killian O'Connor. I think going forward will be probably my man of the match on the day. Thought really shun out from start to finish when they're into the wind in the first half, and you know, finished very strongly as well as well as getting four for play. I think he was fouled two or three times and and set up and the very first score of the game for Peter Power. And you know, all through was was a huge influence on proceedings but get great interplay I must say in this uh, a real team effort for ah, St. Yeah, yeah and that, that, that has been the style and it has been criticised at times Cullum and you, you saw at the end of the game no one up the field no real out ball I'd be critical of that but at, at the end of the day some of the I mean the goal which ultimately separates the teams I suppose at the end the goal alone was a thing of beauty of inter interplay and what they work on you know and, and Brendan's obviously a big believer it's a lot of the way Davy Fitz sets up his teams and you know they, they do that and you know we saw the point from Keen Galvin in the second half as well which was similar you know that little link ball not like football but but you know taking the best aspects of football and adding super strikes at the end of it and uh, you know great to see all the CBC fans they'd be very used to this from rugby obviously uh, uh, used to cheering on their men and they've got behind their team today as well and nice to see them out in the field as well and 
you know, it was it was played in a great spirit, I have to say, and John O'Halloran had a very, yeah. very, very good game. OK, well, we've we've mentioned some of the uh, Flannans players there, Killian O'Connor, uh, King Galvin we have to mention as, as well. Ah, yeah, like, Gal would be kind of a mark man in lots of ways, but, you know, yeah, he's, he's a great bit of stuff. We, you know, we're very lucky that he's he's a club man of ours, Colum, and, and, you know, himself and Dara, Dara Healy, you know, they're, they're great lads and, and um, very grounded as well, you know, they'll always turn up for, for club under-21 training and, you know they're they're just great lads and uh, in fairness I think this Flannans team in in general you know that minor final last year Ruan Corafin beat Clarecastle in that final there's so many of them involved there uh, you know you see O'Donnell and O'Connor Ashley Broha and all you know so they'd be great pals as well as you know mm. rivals at club level so that's what the Hearty Cup is all about indeed on from that into the Freshers All Ireland and the Fitzgibbon Cup Sigerson Cup that kind of thing. That's that's the beauty of these competitions. You get to play with lads that you'll you'll probably wind up fighting with for the rest of your life. Barry, you're on the Clare team with them or something. I, but I, 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 I see one of your old uh, comrades there, James e. O'Connor, and like you look at someone like James E, a man that like yourself won two All Ireland medals in 1995 and 1997. But the look of joy on his face today yeah. just shows you how important something like this is. Yeah, and like see, James is. You know, James is in as a teacher in Fannins. I don't know, I want to speculate what year, but he's there quite a while at this stage. Uh, he certainly wouldn't be there. Like, Brendan is is there probably four or five years, Brendan Bugler. And obviously, James, he has seen so many bad days and, and disappointments when it was questioned whether Fannins might even go back B, you know, which was, you know, to traditionalists. But they were shipping heavy beatings, you know, from the Art School Reaches, the Turles, the Temple Moors of this world. And, you know, but. These, these guys, you know, five years ago they brought them to a hearty final as first years off, took them off on a bus. Uh, they're not all still there, obviously, but a lot of them are. And look, uh, their award has is, is been, you know, here today lifting 22nd hearty cup. And they mean so much to James and all the, the tradition that's handed down from in our time. There's so many priests there. And they were brilliant. They were great guys to, you know, to encourage on. We, I learned so much personally and all. At my, I know my own age group. Uh, Pat Healy, Dara's father would have played and we would have won five championships together with the club, you know. So, so we, we owe an awful lot to Flannans, the club's around it and it's a fantastic nursery and uh, it's great to see them back on top for the first time in 15 years. Okay. Well, give, give, give a few words there about uh, CBC. Jack Allen obviously was uh, the man that, that kept them in it for so long. And then there was that spell at the start of the second half for 10 minutes when they started to reel Flannans in and for a few moments it looked like they were going to get they were going to get a foothold of this final. Oh, absolutely. And I, I said it at halftime, Colm, that I, I certainly felt this was not over at halftime. And, you know, within four minutes of the second half, it was four points was reeled back to a point. And a huge credit to them with the way they battled. Very hard to take losing two Hearty Cup finals in a row. But, you know, I did wonder a little bit only with only four survivors from last year because you would say, you know, you'd like to be having the seven or eight guys to have that strength. And obviously came very, very close to winning it last year against Middleton. Uh, but look, some fantastic players, some great prospects uh, for Cork going forward. None more so, as you mentioned, Cahill. And I really like Dara Burke, I have to say. Worked so hard. Daly is obviously a Walford man, but he showed us what he's capable of near the end. Shane Kingston at fullback, likewise. Very, very solid in there. So, you know, James Dwyer midfield, they'll, they'll be very proud of their lads this evening. Uh, it's hard to take getting to the. But they're still in the All Ireland, remember, and that's what they'll be looking at. And, maybe in one way they have a nicer draw for next week than Flannans have uh, and, and they'll just have to pick themselves up and get back on the horse again recovery I suppose tomorrow and, and get back training on Tuesday because they have a massive one as you said next weekend as have Flannans Flannans and Kieran's in my time was a traditional one in the other colleges and it hasn't happened in so long so uh, they kick any boys will be relish in that as well OK, well, the uh, presentation just uh, about to get underway here at the front of the stand. So as uh, Dalo pointed out, uh, St. Flannan's, their prize for winning the Hearty Cup is a uh, Dr. Cup All-Ireland quarter-final meeting with St. Kieran's College, which will be played next weekend, while uh, CBC will be playing Prize of Athen Rye uh, next weekend. It is a 22nd title for St. Flannan's. The wait continues, though, for CBC for that uh, first title. But CBC aren't giving up on uh, titles just yet as the school are in the Munster Schools Senior Cup Rugby Final in uh, about two weeks' time against their old rivals of PBC. And uh, they defeated uh, CBC defeated Rockwell uh, during the week 22-10 and PBC de defeated Munchens 33-10. So that's uh, going to take precedence, I'd say, in the school in uh, the coming days and weeks. I won't be volunteering for commentary on that one, Colum, I, I leave it to uh, one of our experts on the, the, the oval ball. <laughs>
Right, that's where we're going to have to leave it from uh, Mallow this afternoon as the uh, Flannans crowd here in front of us uh, streaming out uh, in delight. The uh, CBC crowd behind them, uh, to their credit, staying on as well too for the presentation. That is uh, it from our broadcast this afternoon. Our thanks to the Munster Council for facilitating us here in Mallow. Our thanks to Anthony Daly on co-commentary, to Raf and Jack who are on the technical side of things and to thank you as well too for watching at home. So that's where we're going to leave it this afternoon as St. Flannan's College of Ennis, one of the powerhouses of the Dr. Harty Cup, have ended well, what they'd consider a famine, 15 years reclaiming the trophy and pushing them further up top of the roll of honour with 22 monster titles. That's it from all of us here. Thank you indeed for watching and hopefully we'll have your company again soon.